Well, you're watching Rapid MMA. I'm Tyler, and we're going to do kind of a brief, briefer breakdown. I like to call them rapid rundowns, where I'll just go over a few topics that are important to highlight for McGregor versus Diaz. Very brief summary on top of it. It was scheduled to be Rafael Dos Anjos versus Conor McGregor. Dos Anjos pulls out because of a broken foot, and Diaz is a replacement. Everyone thinks these two are going to just stand and bang. That's at least the general consensus that I've seen. And yes, that's a possibility, and especially since Diaz doesn't have much time to come up with a game plan, we don't know what they're going to focus on for training. There are a lot of smart guys on their team though, and if it's one thing they're going to tell Diaz, I would imagine it would be, try to take it to the ground, especially if Jake Shields is in the corner. In a way, this fight could be more dangerous for McGregor, when Nate Diaz says he doesn't give a fuck. I really believe he doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't care about the hype, he doesn't care if you're good on the feet, he isn't afraid to engage and he isn't afraid to try to take you down either. I'll remind you that Nate Diaz tried to grapple with Rory McDonald. He actually took Rory down in that fight, and he continued to try throughout the fight. He also tried to backmount Rory on the feet at one point as well. The difference between Diaz and Dos Anjos is that Diaz will wrap you up and tap you up from any position. Who knows if he decides to be like Donald Cerrone against Alex Oliveira, the fight that just took place on Sunday. He could go for the takedown, pass the guard, and start working for submissions. Now, Luke Thomas in his recent live chat said that it would be pandemonium if McGregor KOs Diaz. Which it will be. But, in a way, we're kind of just expecting that. We expect McGregor to do, the, do that at this point. He's knocking everyone out. We know that he's very powerful and it was at featherweight. But, the way he talks, he, you just kind of want to believe him. So, it's, it's sort of expected. But I think, what happens if Diaz submits McGregor in the first round? I feel like that would be a holy shit moment. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter too much to McGregor since he's still a champ at featherweight. He can still talk, defend the belt, create other matchups at lightweight, featherweight, or even welterweight, even if he loses, and he's still a huge draw. The kicker is, if he gets submitted by Diaz, the blueprint is kind of there to defeat him. Which is funny because I think the blueprint is there now, but McGregor has managed to bypass opponents or take on short notice contenders and defeat them. So we're kind of waiting for that, that contender to come along and just submit McGregor. And I feel like when that happens, some people will be like, told you so, and then the other group will be in awe. And I just feel like it would be crazy as hell, I, th I feel like Diaz his stock is already high, but it would skyrocket. So I just wanted to bring that up, let it sink in. Imagine if it took Diaz one round to wrap up McGregor. And here, here's a little bit of stats on top of it, and it's just his record. Nate Diaz has 18 wins, 4 of them by, burn, by knockout, 3 by decision, and 11 by submission. He's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt under Caesar Gracie, so the potential is there. But we all think it's going to be a striking match though, right? So let's go over that. Diaz is also a southpaw, and this time he's holding the reach advantage, only by 2 inches though. Still, it's a it's the distance that McGregor will have to adjust to. Everyone wants to talk about McGregor's movement and timing, but if you look back, Diaz isn't all that bad either. Watch the fight against Takanori Gomi. Diaz controls the lead hand, does a lot of feigning, baiting, it smoke screens, and he snipes Gomi. Upper body movement was good and he picked Gomi apart until he went for the takedown. That's when Diaz submitted him via armbar. Just like McGregor though, Diaz had a very significant reach advantage against most opponents. Diaz's reach is 76 and McGregor's is 74. The last time Diaz fought someone with a reach that was even comparable to McGregor's was Donald Cerrone and his reach is 73 inches and the next closest was Rory McDonald and his was 76 inches so that matched him. Now Nate Diaz won the fight against Cerrone but Cerrone's upper body movement is non-existent at least at that point and he was just picked apart and Rory McDonald he wasn't really he wasn't really hurt on the feet at all in fact I feel like uh, Rory had the upper hand there too with the Superman punches the leg kicks and the takedowns so the striking on the feet might be weird because Diaz may overextend and McGregor may just come up short but you never really know that's just complete speculation and I'm not expecting that to happen since both these guys are decent strikers in their own right I'm not going to go into detail on McGregor's striking, I've already done that in the past couple videos and it's not really the time to do that anyway. 
we already know what to expect. Uh, he keeps a good distance, he throws the left hand, and he uses flashy kicks and uh, to pressure his opponent and uh, keep him in the direction that he wants to go. And I'll keep Diaz as simple as I can too. Diaz walks forward, he manipulates his opponent's lead hand so they can't block or parry, and he hits them with the left. Other times he'll slap the lead hand away and throw the right hook right after that and follow up with combinations. However, you can find him overextending quite a bit, and, and I think that's part of his style. He'll put his upper body right into that pocket, throw a couple shots, then lean way back to avoid the counter. And that's why he has trouble against leg kicks, because he leans so heavy on that lead leg. It should be a good fight, and I definitely think we'll see some interesting exchanges. I could see McGregor giving up the center of the octagon for this fight and letting Diaz do his thing and press forward. That way he can counter. That's kind of uh, McGregor's classic style before the UFC. I just am really excited to see if Diaz decides to tie up with McGregor and take his back or something. I'll be back with my prediction videos soon. Please be sure to subscribe and leave your thoughts below. Thanks for watching.